All right, here's a quick look at the uh, GeoGebra program that I wrote for trig function transformations. Uh, right now I have all six of them graphed on uh, the same coordinate plane. Uh, it's kind of crazy looking, but uh, let me take a few of these away and you'll see that if I move these sliders around the uh, a, B, C, D, and V, D, uh, excuse me, A, B, C, and D values are a little bit easier to see. So let me take the A value first, right? What you're looking at here is the sine curve, and uh, if I change the A value, right, the amplitude value is normally 1 on sine, which means it goes up to 1, and the value goes down to negative 1. But if I change that, if I make it a little bit bigger, now all of a sudden, if my A value is 2, now my graph goes up to 2, and it goes down to negative 2. And I can change it in the other direction too. If I change it to like a 0.5, now my graph is much shorter, which is kind of cool. If I do the same thing for the... Um, cosine so let me move this back to one and I'll pull cosine up here and I'll get rid of sine same thing right if I make it a little bit bigger it goes up right in terms of like sound waves that would be really loud and this would be a little bit softer be harder to hear and if I make that a value negative now all of a sudden I've got a reflection so there's the cosine reflected and over here you can see the algebra view, it's negative cosine. All right, so let me put that back to 1, my A value back to 1. And I'll show you what the A value does for tangent. So if my, my normal tangent's right here, let me center that a little bit more. If my normal tangent looks like that, <coughs> and I increase my A value, my tangent kind of gets pulled, it kind of gets stretched vertically. And if I make my A value a fraction, a positive fraction between 0 and 1, you can see that the graph starts to squish down. If I make my A value negative, that's when we start to get our reflections. All right, let me put it back to 1, and I'll pull up cosecant. So the cosecant graph normally starts right there. And if I change my A value, I make it a fraction, you can see that it squishes both curves squish closer to the x-axis. So there my A value is 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. If I make that bigger, then all of a sudden they start to go apart from the x-axis. And if I negate that A value, then all of a sudden it reflects. So that's kind of interesting. Let me put it back to 1, I'll show you secant and cotangent as well. So there's secant if I change the A value, make it bigger, both top and bottom curves go away from the x-axis and if I make it a fraction, positive fraction between 0 and 1, it goes between the x-axis and 1. And finally for cotangent, if I pull cotangent up on the screen, same thing, if I make the A value bigger then one, it kind of gets skinnier and squished vertically, or stretched vertically, and a, s a fraction between zero and one, it kind of gets squished down. Negating that makes it kind of look like a tangent. All right, let's mess with the, the B value. The B value, as I mentioned, changes, I'll put sign back on the screen. It changes the, let's see, the period, right? So if normally the period of tangent is two pi, which means it starts here and it ends here at 2 pi, about 6.28. If I increase the period, that means I have to decrease the B value. 2 pi divided by a fraction will make that period longer. So now it takes longer for this point zero zero to repeat itself. Now it's way over here at like 12.6 or so. And you would calculate that by taking 2 pi divided by the B value. All right, so if we change it again, if I make the B value a really big number, or maybe let's make it 2, 
Now all of a sudden my period's getting smaller. It's getting smaller. So this would be like a higher pitch frequency if we're talking sound, because now this point zero zero repeats itself right here. So the graph, the sine curve repeats itself. It completes one cycle in a period of now it's just pi. So the period is two pi divided by two. And same thing for cosine and tangent, right? If I change the period on tangent, it's normally pi units. Now it's smaller and smaller. All right, if I change that b value to a fraction, now the graph kind of gets wider. All right, it's changing the period. Do one more here for period. Change the, the b value. The bigger the b value, the, the quicker the graphs repeat themselves. The smaller the b value, if it's a fraction, the longer it takes to repeat itself. All right, so let's change the, let's go back to sine, and let's change the C value. The C value changes the phase shift. So this is going to be a horizontal translation. So if I change it to, you know, watch as I'm moving my slider left and right. All right, remember I talked about if it's a positive C value, the graph moves left. So watch as I move this C value from 0 to 0.5. The graph moved from 0, 0 to negative 0.5. Positive C value moves left. I'll move it more. Negative C value. So here's where it's supposed to start. C value of 0. That's normal sign. A negative C value moves the whole curve to the right. That's called a phase shift. It takes the whole graph and just moves it. It doesn't change the period at all. It just shifts it left and right. Same thing for sine and cosine. Let me go down to uh, tangent, rather. Let's go to tangent. If I change the C value, the whole thing is going to... Each graph is going to stay equidistant. It's just going to move. It's going to shift left and right. It's called a translation, a phase shift in this case. All right, finally, let's take a look at what happens when we change the D value. This one is a vertical translation. So if I change it to positive 1, the graph moves up 1. Negative 1 moves down 1. The D value changes the vertical position of the graph. Cosine will be the same. Tangent's the same. Up, positive D value down negative d value. All right, so I wrote this program in GeoGebra pretty quickly. I just kind of uh, defined all these these trig functions, and I put these sliders in using this function right here. It wasn't too difficult, but it's kind of helpful. You know, it definitely helps to see what these graphs looks like. Look like I haven't really figured out how to label my x-axis with radians yet. Uh, if anybody knows how to do that, please let me know. Uh, it's especially useful like, if I wanted to change like a bunch of stuff. If I wanted to change the B value, the C value, and the D value, right? all these things are changing and our graphs are getting a little bit more and more complex. And all along it's changing all of my, my algebra views as well. You can see the functions, functions actually changing over here to the left, which is kind of cool. Uh, and of course it just looks neat when you put all of them on the same graph. But anyway, I hope that helped you. Uh, it's kind of a cool thing if you want to mess around with this GeoGebra program. I've, I'm not really very good at it. I just kind of, I've always kind of known about it for the past couple of years, but I've never really uh, sort of dabbled with it until just recently. But it's kind of a cool thing. Uh, so thanks for watching.